welcome back to the Locked In channel. We are a Locked In family. No, I told you about this. You see what I'm talking about? We still together break contracts. Yeah. forever. This loyalty. Yeah. We are a Locked In family. We are a family. If you could see I'm twiddling yeah. my thumbs here yeah, because I'm not a part of that. All yeah. right, guys. Um, <laughs> we might sound a bit softer. Yeah. Because the baby's sleeping. Right there. The baby. And we and the literally were supposed to see. film this and then film this and then he's been on the booby. <laughs> so the baby was on the booby. That's why we couldn't <laughs> film it. That's why we couldn't film it. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? I just leave them. These days you just leave them where they are. Yeah. You know, we can't build a cough here, so <laughs> if you laugh here, yeah, you just probably cough along. But yeah, you guys have requested, highly requested. Definitely. How we got saved. And I'm, I'm excited about this one. Are you? Yeah, yeah I'm really excited. And, I, and she knows it takes me a lot to get me excited. He's never excited. But that is, I am really, really, yeah, I'm keen. Keen Ooh. Bean. So let's go. Go on, Keen Bean then. Boom. How do you get saved? Do you know what is? I, I've always had a God consciousness. I just want to put that out there. You did? Yeah, yeah. What, from birth? Yeah. From birth. I think I'm Jeez, born with that. Born. Yeah, 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 yeah. Goo goo gaga. What? I was there, yeah. Oh, yeah. Step um, above the rest then. <laughs> I've always had that God consciousness. I think it's just the house I was brought up in. And just an awareness, you know. Like, so I didn't work for that. You know, I didn't go and study for that. You know, that just happened. It was just my lot. And growing up in my community, there was a lot of people that had a level of God consciousness. And I know a lot of the people that watch us also have a level of God consciousness. Mm. And yeah, so like when I'd commit a crime or, you know, even while I was running away from the Jakes, I'd be like, please, like, help me out. Like, you know, hiding under the bin. Don't let them turn this left. You know, and he was faithful, you know, so. He's been but, faithful, Lord. <laughs> you see, this is not your time. <laughs> All right, cool. So back to God consciousness. I don't want to smell your lipstick, and I already did. <laughs> but anyway, back to God consciousness. Um, it went from God consciousness to Christ consciousness. Mm. You know, one of the same, but a bit more specific. You know, because um, I, I grew up with huge influences that are still a part of my life today. A huge Islamic influence, a huge um, Rastafarian influence. You know, a huge Afrocentric influence, but that's all for other vlogs, you know. We don't want to go there right now. But yeah, um, I was aware that Jesus lives and that he died for my sins, our sins. And I went to a Catholic school, so we kind of did all of that. And we had that, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday mass that I never did attend. You know, I went to an Anglican church because my parents were with the Church of England. I got baptised there. They gave me a little candle. That had a did you get that candle coffee In you see orange. yeah nah nah you see what i'm talking about it's just off <laughs> but yeah it was a candle that had like my name on it and it was like <laughs> yeah you've been baptized or confirmed i can't remember one of the two so yeah i was aware and i was surrounded by that that was the direction and um the subject today is how we got saved and for those that don't know being saved is being born again accepting jesus christ as your personal lord and savior and i did that for the very first time when i was 16 years old. <laughs> why, why are you, doing, why are you Sorry, laughing? It just reminded me of something. What did it remind you of? But I'll say it for mine. <laughs> Alright, cool. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. Interject. Okay, okay. Sorry. It reminded me of like, because it said the first time you got saved. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, the first time. Yeah, the because first time. I used to get saved loads of times <laughs> in Brixton. <laughs> Has anyone ever been saved? You know that um, <laughs> preachers that preach on the street and will come yeah. and talk to you and then be like you want to give your life to Christ and because I just come over to keep talking you I'll be like it. yeah did it. <laughs> I did it like four times in Brixton like, and said the prayer then I'd walk over and be like who is stopping me man yeah she probably <laughs> needed it four times but anyway yeah so at 16 and it was around my GCSE periods yeah and there was a young lady that she would be nameless for now she was pretty into me so anyway, maybe I'm being overconfident, but you know, they, you know, they tend to be, they tend to be, she was pretty into me. Probably weren't. Yeah. No, but anyway, she was, she was very different. You could tell, like, she had that church girl kind of, you know, that air, you know, that you don't want to kind of, I didn't want to be the devil and introduce her to hell, you know. So I tried to stay my distance, but she was a keen bean, you know. And she ended up, like, she would come to my house. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, nah, not that. She would come to my house. I used to go to her house. Mm -mm. 
<laughs> but it's just, it's just, I used to go to their house to actually get away from the area. Mm-mm. No, don't do that. <laughs> There was, there was. Where was her mother and father? <laughs> but it's her. Her family was aware of my involvement, you okay. know, how I was living, mm-hmm. and they were very, like, Christ-centered, mm-hmm. you know, and they wanted to introduce that to me. Mm-hmm. So each time I would go there, they would talk to, you. They would talk to me Not about that. that. You they were would pursuing their daughter. Nah, I weren't pursuing, you know, like, cause I don't pursue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just hurry up. But yeah, anyway, so cut a long story short. She kept on, it was cat and mouse. She would say, I'll say, yeah, this Sunday, this Sunday, this Sunday, I'll go over there, eat their food, you know how I do. Yeah. And then say, yeah, this Sunday, I'm definitely, they'll be like, make sure you're coming. I'll be like, yeah, I'm there. And then they'll come and get me on the Sunday, and I tell my mom to tell them, mom, you are bad, you're a bad mom sometimes. <laughs> I send my mom to the door, tell them, tell them I'm out, or tell them I'm asleep. Mm. And my mom would go to the door, you know, Carl is out, he didn't come back yesterday. Da, da, da. And anyway, we did that for a little while. And then one day they just called my phone on the automaton. They're like, nah, literally, enough is enough. Like we got a, a, a young man at our house now, he's, he, was, he was about four years older than me. Mm. And they're like, he's at the house now, he used to be involved in what you were involved in, what you're currently involved in. Mm. Um, he's given his life to Jesus and he wants to speak to you. We really think you need to meet him. Mm. So either come or don't come again. It was kind of like that. They didn't say it like yeah, that, yeah, but it was but that. You know, I could feel eating it. our food now. Ah, uh, you know, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, the jollof rice. Yeah, 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 it's taxed okay. now. So um, anyway, I ended up forwarding over there with my friend, he's going to be called Harlem, yeah? So me and Harlem went over there and me and Harlem's actually born in the same day, in the same hospital, in the same ward, and our parents knew each other. <laughs> yeah. so you're it's not <laughs> I'm done with me, oh, yeah, whatever. So now, I always thought you were yeah. like your mum. So dad. whatever. So me and Harlem, yeah, literally like, but we didn't know each other growing up. Mm. We had seen each other a couple of times. Our parents knew of each other. They went to the same secondary school, mm. and Harlem was a bit of a loose cannon. So then the teachers used to ask me to give him his like five pills in the morning before school. He had to take one for his ADD, his ABCD, his ADHD. His he was just you know, mm. and but he was one of my close close friends and. Lion is doing it. Yeah, so he was one of my close friends. And yeah, so um he followed me over there. We ended up going there, chatting to this guy. But mind you, when I went there, I was thinking, this guy's a bit old taught. They all claim to be ex-gang members mm. and he's on what I was on. And mm. I'm like, no one's on what I'm on currently. You know, this one here is a different sort of, you know? But anyway, um Go on. But anyway, um that line. But anyway, went over there, spoke to him, and it, it, it did feel authentic, you know? And it was the first time they were having a Bible study in the house. And the Bible study was actually called Out of Zion Ministry. It was the first double OZ, and some of you may know and remember double OZ, they did their thing. Um, Pastor Michael was doing good things in the community. Mm. But anyway, that was their first ever gathering. Went there, heard the word, he spoke to me outside, felt like I felt him, but I didn't know where I sat. And then just rock him quickly. Yeah, go for it. I'm gonna carry on, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then they asked whether I wanted to be prayed for. So I was like, why not? Like they've shared a little bit of a word that me and Harlem was half listening to. I said, all right, cool. I'm here to receive some prayer. Put my hand up, close my eyes. They prayed for me. And then while they were praying for me. I had to open my eyes because I did feel something. I'm like, I wasn't too sure what I felt, you know? And um, I don't know how much people know about kind of nighttime episodes, but I've experienced a lot of those. So I felt different presences in my life. So for me, I was a bit suspicious. I'm like, wait a second, is that God? You know, is that Lucy? You know, who is that? Um, but I could feel a peace with it. So I was like, I'm pretty sure this is coming from the God side. So then I carried on, let her close my eyes, let them pray for me, and then I'm opening my eyes again, and Harlem's looking at me like, bloody heck, like, do you feel that? Like, we're talking with our eyes, like, I feel something, do you feel that? And I'm looking at them back like, bro, I feel that, you know? So afterwards, he kind of asked us, after he's finished praying, he could kind of sense, you know, that something was happening to us. And he was like, do you want to give your life to Jesus? And I thought, kind of think I have, like, they gave me the candle years ago, like, I think they gave me a certificate too, like, I go to a Catholic school, so, but something was like, 
you ain't done this. You know, this is something separate, you know? So I was like, yeah, I do, you know? So he was like, repeat after me. I repeated after him, basically, something like along the lines of, do you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Blah, 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 blah. And I said yes, and I did all of those things. And the moment I did it, I literally felt like a virgin. <laughs> I felt like, I don't know, I felt like my skin was new. Like, I felt like, I don't know, like, lick bottom trainers were on, you know? Everything was just fresh. I felt like I had, you know, but this was more than just a physical change. I could feel it, you know, it was deep. And then, so all right, that session finished and my phone was buzzing off. I was still a drug dealer. Still had more drugs to sell. So my phone was hitting off and I'm like, listen, I gotta get out of here. So as me and um, Harlem were stepping outside the house, I'm like, bro, cause he accepted Jesus as well. I'm like, how do you feel? And he's like, they never use the word really born again. They use do and do sinners pray, accept Jesus and blah, blah, blah. They never said born again. So I hadn't actually come across that term as of yet like that. And he was like, he was trying to explain it and we're at the front door trying to explain it to each other. And he was like, I feel like I'm new again. Like that's the we're sort of using the words, like I'm new again. I feel like a baby. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, I feel like a baby too. I feel new. I feel clean. And it was like, yeah, we're just excited at the fact we feel clean. I, I didn't realise we were dirty, you know? So we've stepped out the house and there was an open car window. And before we call that easy lunch. Like if you see an open car window, you check it, you can call Sammy who was some Afghan 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 guy that you can sell electronic devices. He sells it in his country. It's, it's a quick sale. It's like miniature black market in the ends, you know? So I was like, ooh, and it was an infrared. And at the time, you could, that was like a hundred pound pop instantly. So we looked at that, our eyes opened, but then because our eyes had been opened, it didn't feel the same. So I'm looking at him, looking at me. And I'm like, usually it would be a race to who's gonna grab that quicker, but his hands was not moving, neither was my hands. And I'm like, ain't you gonna grab that? And he was like, Nah. And I'm like, he asked me, am I going to grab it? I said, nah, I'm not going to grab it. It don't feel right. And we're like, all right. So what we're going to do, just leave it. <laughs> like, this was unheard of. And he was like, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it. And I said, I think I'm going to leave it too. Hence, I was on my way to go sell drugs. L listen, life is complicated, yeah? <laughs> but I was like, I'm not going to take this though. And I was like, yeah, it just feels wrong. And I remember we were happy we had left behind something with monetary value. It didn't actually make sense that we were happy that we had left the valuable behind, we had left money behind. It was like, in our world, it was like almost losing money because it was money we could have had. So if I had left it behind, we lost it. It's like losing, I don't know, a hundred pounds. And we were celebrating at the fact we lost a hundred pounds. And that's when I realized we had gained something a lot more. And that was, yeah, that was the first time I ever got saved and that's how I got saved. Cass is still tapping lines, bum. Oh, if you can hear the. Peace. focus. You'll probably be able to hear whirring in the back. That's because Lion is now in his mama room. And you might be able to hear him too. <laughs> so, how I got saved. So, I remember. Um, I've been basically, like I said, I've been saved in Brixton so many times. But I remember. Um, I've always, like, so basically, I have, I can't say I've always been God conscious. That's wrong. Because my mum was an atheist. Okay. That's the right word, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, she was an atheist. I, or agnostic, one of the two. She didn't believe. She didn't know, she, agnostic. Uh, agnostic. She believed in God. Yeah. She didn't believe in Jesus or stuff. Yeah, yeah. So she'd always kind of say that doctrine around the house. And I had that same sort of doctrine. And I'd go to school <clears> and share that same doctrine with everyone. Be like, this saved thing, forget about it. Like, you know, God, like, we can go to God when we're older. People are corrupt. I just say, I literally just regurgitate what my mum said. So that's why they say about showing your child, not telling your child. But yeah, she yeah. always just sent me to churches and all this stuff and stuff. So basically, what had happened was um, one of my friends, um, one of my friends who basically I'd met him when we was younger, mum owned a church. Yeah. So I had just got like 
I was really insecure and started being really raunchy on wow. Facebook. Wow. So I'd take like pictures like I do remember I did I did see some of those pictures. I'd take some raunchy <laughs> pictures like of me with no clothes on and yes. jeans or something. Like just weird yes. stuff, yeah. I just kept doing it like for attention. So I was getting attention and then I happened to get his attention and he was like in terms of him saying to me, Cass, like come to church. Mm. I remember that week he invited me and another boy invited me to church. But Same church or different church? A different church. Okay. But I kind of knew the other boy fancied me. All right. Then. So I was like, yeah. don't really want to go yeah. down that route, yeah? <laughs> and I was like, let me just, let me, let me, like, and because basically around my area that I was living where my hostel was, there's this man that kept seeing me and inviting me to the church, but I didn't go because I thought like they sowed the first seed, but I didn't go because I was like, nah, I just don't know them, Croydon, I didn't really want to go. I wasn't ready for it. But so anyway, I said to uh, my friend's, this is my friend yeah i'm gonna to come to your mum's church i'm gonna see what it's about whatever that was like say um two months before i actually did come because i'd always be scared and i wasn't quite sure and i remembered now like the the actual day when i was gonna go i was saying to my friend like oh i don't think i'm gonna go like what if um i go and there's so many boys there or it's in the middle of Myatt's field and what it like I just kept doing what ifs and I was like oh I'm just scared I'm shy she was like just go even if I don't go and I was like I don't know then I remember I called him and I was like can you meet me at the bus stop and he was like yeah and he's like are you coming yeah I was like yeah <laughs> and because I had left the house I couldn't go back and I remember wearing my faith shoes yeah if anyone knows about those faith shoes there was a faith in Croydon and they had these pointy shoes and I was wearing them and they were like material and they were point shoes and I was wearing a fur jacket yeah a brown long fur jacket with a hood yeah yes, and swag. <coughs> I remember I got there and I went with my friend so I met my friend who lived in the area Which we'll call her Gaga oh, okay, okay. yeah I met Gaga and we went in and she followed me in and everything and I remember um, <coughs> I think it was Gaga that followed me in. I don't know if my other friend also came. I can't remember. But obviously I got in there now and I was, um, I remember uh, the, my pastor, now you've seen her, my pastor, Pastor Mimi started sharing the word and I remember it just touched me. Mm. And actually like, I got in there and as soon as I got in there, honestly, I was nervous at first because obviously I was looking around those bare boys <laughs> but the way everyone was acting no one cared so you know like when you go to somewhere but no one cared about me yeah. everyone was just caring about what was going on yeah. and I was like this is so weird because usually you go into a room and everyone cares about you or what you're wearing or mm. what you this but everyone just cared about what was going on yeah. so she started preaching and I just felt like she was talking to me mm. and it's like everyone had fallen away mm. and it was just me and her oh. and I just felt like she was just talking directly to me and my eyes started to well up and I was like the hell is going on here and I remember I was just crying and I was just crying and crying and crying <laughs> and crying and crying every time she hit something she hit wow. something it was like boof 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 and I just felt like everything that I'd been missing all of these years mm. was that wow it's like I had been searching for something and in this room I don't know what this is but this is it I was like imagine that you don't know exactly what it is but you're just in the room feeling like this is what I've been searching for and then I remember she just carried on preaching. I'm sure she was preaching something to do with love. And at the end of her preaching, she was like, okay, um, does anyone want to get saved? I think she asked. And come and speak to me after. It wasn't like in front of everyone. And I remember my friend Gaga went and spoke to her and then she kind of called me in the room and she started, and then she started talking to me. Gaga left. And I remember Gaga kept coming. I think at the time it was like um, to the kitchen to look through the window at me. Okay. I remember I was just crying and crying and pastor was just talking to me and she, and I just remember I didn't understand who Jesus was at the time but I knew that whatever it was this is what I want yeah and that was the main thing regardless I always say to people yeah like yeah regardless of anything yeah. regardless of what they've caught like Jesus and you yeah. know you don't understand everything or but if you feel you know like it's a that's what I always say people can't sway what I believe because mm. it wasn't a thing I did it was a feeling mm. do you understand that brought me to the decision mm. so I didn't really understand who Jesus was I didn't really mm. understand even who God was at the time mm. but I knew that this is what I needed Got to you. be able to be fine Got and this is what I've been searching for basically my whole life so I remember I got saved and um, yeah from then I just kept coming with um, Gaga with no, Gaga didn't come really but it was um, I kept coming and meeting um, my friends my pastor's son yeah and I just kept coming and coming and coming and I remember the first time I even came I think I even went back to her house that day and I remember that's where Carl 
we went to the shop. She sent me yeah. to the shop with them, and then my shoes, my face point shoes, got really wet to the point where my feet were squelching, <laughs> and I was so shy that I couldn't look in the, no one in the eye. Yeah, I remember. And I remember Carl would be talking to me, remember. but I'd just be looking at the floor, and that. everyone would think I'm rude because I'm not looking at them in yeah, the eye. But yeah, I couldn't yeah. look at them in the I eye because I was that. so so insecure. But we thank God for what He's done now. <laughs> yeah, agreed. I look everyone in the eye Why? now. Look you in the eye. Long eye contact. I you mean? Look deep in the eye. Come like on, this. man. I you mean? Not joking, but yeah. But at least you had the faith shoes on. You had the. You had the <laughs> that was my faith. <laughs> that was your. You were standing on something, baby. Look, but yeah, literally, Get that that is my how I got saved. Yeah. And it just. It wasn't, it's not big, it's not like a big war. Yeah. It's not that. The saved bit, I always say to people, people are like, oh, I don't know if I should be get saved. The saved bit's the, the, the beginning. Stop. You're just saying something, um, believing and confessing, believing in your heart, yeah. believing in your heart, confessing with your mouth, Romans 10, 10. that Jesus Christ is your Lord and personal Savior. That's literally. It. And I remember um, Pastor being like, the heavens are rejoicing right now. Come on. Like, literally, God is so happy. And Come I was on. like, is it? Yeah. Someone's happy about me? Come on, man. Like, when Celebration, you're feeling, look, baby. Wow, Lion, Lion has baby. started. But yeah, that's how I got saved. And just to anyone out there who's thinking about getting saved, it's not, it's not, it's what happens with it. Yeah. It's the fact that God, you get to know God on a deeper level. Come on, man. He starts to show you things. At that beginning stage, you're a baby in it. Come on, man. So he shows you so much mighty, mighty stuff, powerful stuff. And if you want to know about like the things that God showed me after that, how he showed me himself, comment below yeah. and we'll like literally because too much. getting saved but too how much. he showed me himself yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. that's different that's different that's a different that's story different. Yeah. that's different so um that's when bible hops off of the bible and just slaps you on your face like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's been it and if you are that person <laughs> that's feeling like you need something yeah, yeah and you don't know what it is and you can't find purpose and you you've, you're, you're getting everything but yet nothing's good enough you know mm. you get the money you get the job you got this you got that it's probably that you need god you Agreed. need a bit of Jesus in your life, Come yeah? On, so yeah, message us below. <laughs> sprinkle of Jesus. No, you don't need the whole of Jesus. <laughs> Not a sprinkle, you need all of them. But yeah, um, message us below. Yeah. Tell us what story time you want to see yeah. next. Come Lions on. crying. Come we got to go. Come on. We love you. Comment, Come like, on. subscribe, all, all of it. And stay that. locked in.